Welcome back, everybody. Um, I've been lied to today. I think we've all been lied to. I've been severely lied to. Um, you know, I thought I thought trucks, like big trucks, you know, Ford F one fifties and all that shenanigans. Um, <laughs> shenanigans. You know, I, I I thought it would it would out race me today, mm. but I was lied to. Coming in with the German engineering here. Not when you're whipping the Sadies, boy. Yeah, not with the Sadies, that's for sure. So as you know, I have a story to tell you <laughs> about this morning. I'm I'm very chill this morning. So sure. on a on a different day, this would have ended maybe differently. I don't know. But um yeah, I got up just a little happy today and a little chilled out. And I, I and knowing that it's Friday, it's the most hated hated day for driving. You know that already. Of course. It's the worst. I don't know what happens. Everyone Monday, just yeah. decides to get on the road. Yeah, like on a Friday. Monday, everyone's tired and everyone's like slow paced and there's traffic early in the morning. And then Tuesday is just more of like, all right, it's more of a breeze of a drive. Wednesday's doable. Thursday's, okay, I get it. We're approaching the end of the week. You know, mm -hmm. it's getting worse. And then Friday, I don't know what the, f dude, like, just, just suddenly everybody just, oh, you know what? I'm going to shit on everybody today. Screw everybody. I'm going to drive my way. No one knows how to drive. And yeah, it just a, turns into this cluster mess of just nasty driving, dude. It's a complete shit show because I think people are looking forward to the weekend. So they just want to get home or like yeah. get over with. But not only did after my story, I saw this, by the way. That stupid stop sign we have right next to our stew. The one, mm -hmm. It's a dual stop sign that go, <laughs> the both go left. Yeah. Makes stupid. no sense. Absolutely. Okay. What, what do you expect from Fullerton? You know, let's not fix the road, but we'll just post, you know, cop cars there in case there's an accident. Mm -hmm. Just fix the damn street. You know, it's like, it, th where's the logic in that? It makes no sense. We're going to have two stop lanes go left mm -hmm. on a yielding <laughs> major street. But yeah, anyway, she rolled through as if there's no stop sign and it's her own signal as incoming, as, as I was incoming, I was the incoming traffic at that point. Rolling through, okay, I'm just going a regular 45 on a major street. Mm -hmm. And she just rolls through and goes left, like as if there's no stop sign. It's her signal saying green. And I'm like, what the, f dude, like I'm not even worried about killing you, okay? I don't, I don't want to die. <laughs> Welcome to California. <laughs> what else yeah, can I say? Exactly. Back to my story, though, real quick. So I hop on the freeway and I'm going like a nice 65. I'm, I'm chilled out today. I'm gonna be the cool guy on Friday. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so I'm, I'm heading out westbound, and this truck, dude. I'm going down the ramp. Like I, I, I told you, I am just barely starting to go the ramp. I'm, I'm planning to go 65. Mm -hmm. This guy's already going 80 down the ramp. Okay, and I'm like, all right. Let's see. I'm just going to pay attention to him. So at this point, I'm not looking at the road. I'm looking at the mirrors. And I see him. And he's going left and right. And I'm just like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, creep toeing the gas pedal. <laughs> he still can't it. catch up. You know, it's funny. So I'm just, I'm sitting there laughing. I'm like, yo, this is a good funny moment. Turn up the music. And then <laughs> this guy tries to cut me off. What do I do? I just speed up. <laughs> and big this shocker. guy, you just see him like just big trucker hat. Like almost like I just know what says monster back there, <laughs> you know? And um, he has a lifted front and it just re like a heavily reduced back. Like it's just, he's scraping in the back, you know? Mm -hmm, it's one of those sure. trucks. Yeah. He has Raider stickers everywhere. <laughs> All right. And this guy's just angry, dude. And the more he's angry, the more I am what? Laughing. <laughs> I am just hysterically and laughing. And speeding up. Yeah. And this guy hits traffic because he's, he's about to merge off to another freeway. I've been going 100 this whole time. And I'm just like cruising, you know, comfort mm -hmm. mode. <laughs> and this guy's having the bumpiest, most sweaty ride of his life trying to catch up. And that made my day. That made my day this morning. That so, should make your day. That's a yeah, German a funny engineering experience. It's a it's a fun fun little thing. But actually, we do have a dedicated episode for you today. Yeah, um, we have been lied to. What was the question that was floating around well, in your your head for some time? Yeah. So the question is, what are the biggest lies you have been told? Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, "What do you mean historically? Do you mean scandals?" Mm -hmm. Well. We mean self-development. 
Well, not necessarily. I would say it's broader than self-development. I just yeah. want to cover general societal lies that most people automatically believe. Yeah, and these are 12 of the things we came up with mm. based on our own personal experiences and lifestyles. And then number yeah. one, this is, so this is one I hear from a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They just throw out the statement like it's automatically true. Yeah. But that's breakfast is the most important meal of the day, which it's not. Mm -hmm. Because, believe it or not, um, do you know who created the idea of breakfast? I remember reading something like Nabisco. It was a company, but it was corn cornflakes. Uh, not well. I forgot the the actual company, but well, you're, you're thinking along the right lines. It's the, it's the general. Um, it's most food companies that have created this idea. Yeah, and I'll actually read a little bit of an excerpt from this article. Yes, please. But it says, what you may not know is the origin of this ode to breakfast, a 1944 marketing campaign launched by Grape Nuts manufacturer General Mills. Um, they had the goal of selling more cereal. Yeah, quick shots, all that. Uh, during the campaign, which marketers named Eat a Good Breakfast, Do a Better Job, grocery mm -hmm. stores handed out pamphlets that promoted the importance of breakfast, while radio advertisements announced that nutrition ex experts say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Yeah. Um, now where's the lie? <laughs> well, breakfast, that, that is the lie. Yeah. It's this it's, idea that you have to have breakfast in order to yeah. feel good, feel productive, mm -hmm. when in fact the opposite's true. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's reasons why. And before we get to that, I think we, we should cover that, um, intermittent fasting has been a huge thing in the past, I would say seven years, um, mm -hmm. especially with the rise of working out, going to the gym, uh, body, bo like body weight lifting, general health, um, general health and all that. Uh, breakfast is something that you would hear as a child being, you have to eat your breakfast. You got to grow, you know, mm -hmm. you got to start your day. Your brain needs food. That's, those are ways we would, they would use it as, especially when it came time for, um, public school testing. Yeah. Um, state exams and such, uh, we would get provided a lot of food at school. I don't know if you remember Too much. That. Yeah. Way too much food. Yeah, I forgot what the tests were called. Maybe. The, whatever, it doesn't matter. But anyway, um, the mandatory tests we had to take at the end of the year, um, which were government regulated, I guess. Um, along with that came a giant breakfast that mm -hmm. you would get served at school. They would tell you, show up 30 minutes earlier, we'll give you free food. It's and just the worst food yeah, possible. Guess, get, yeah, guess what the food was. Chinese food, cookies. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking back to my okay. high school days. So. Yeah. Well, high school, yeah, it was a little different. But um, uh, public school, what did we have? We had frozen burritos. Yeah. Loaded with cheese, almost no beans. Um, <laughs> almost no beans. Yeah, almost no beans. And then, you know, we don't know what kind of cheese that is. Um, you don't know what cheese. anything is in that. Yeah. And, and you're just a child. You might as well eat a Carl's Jr. Yeah. What was another thing? A cereal bar. Whoa, dude. We got mm. cinnamon toast crunch. We're swimming in high today. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. How is that? Like, do you see how it's like leading to a, a, a like a final exam? What mm -hmm. is wrong with you? <laughs> and you need to think about this logically. So if we look at it from an evolutionary lens, mm -hmm. how we evolved as a species, we didn't have refrigerators back when we were hunter gatherers. We didn't no. have... There, there, were, there would be days on end where you don't have any food whatsoever, mm -hmm. let alone breakfast, yeah. let alone 40 grams of sugar from your cereal and, you know, toast and orange juice, all that other crap. So that's why I find it funny because also a lot of people, like most people these days, they eat, eat too much. They graze. Mm -hmm. They snack here, snack there, and they're just setting themselves up for um, an unhealthy physique. Uh, yeah skinny sugar fat. cravings all that yeah skinny fat skinny fat is a huge example like that's that's actually i would say just as unhealthy well not just as unhealthy as being obese well there's an but, argument to be made for that yeah yeah there is like you see how like i can stand and make an argument mm -hmm. it just doesn't mean it's actually completely true because i did use the words exact same thing <laughs> so, yeah no and if you're a little bit overweight i like run this as an experiment yeah. go without breakfast uh, like first meal push it to 12 mm-hmm so lunch is essentially your first meal. Yeah. And you'll notice a lot of good uh, well, 
could change as Yeah, well. and it depends on what time you wake up. Um, I've been doing it naturally my entire life. Just because I, I disliked breakfast. Mm -hmm. It's not the right time to eat. You have a sour stomach, if anything. Like, I should be kind of letting it uh, generate. Like, why do you let your car warm up in the morning, but not your body? You know? mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Um, I would say it depends, though. Like, if you're an athlete, if, you're, if you have, like, a competitive game, or yeah. you're more focused on you train a lot, yeah. then I'd say a healthy breakfast yeah. is necessary. You know, it just depends. Yeah, you know the season you're in. That's the thing. Yeah. So you're obviously going to shape, you know, a responsible person is going to shape their life to be that way. You know, it's not going to always like every week is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. He acknowledges that every, some weeks are different. Some days are different, whatever. Yeah. Um, but, but generally breakfast is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I could vouch for that because I mean, eating healthy, you need to eat. We're not saying don't eat. It's just, we're, I think clearly here, breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. Yeah. yeah. By very fact that mm -hmm. cereal and food companies created this whole idea that we should be following breakfast. Yeah. And it's just to buy their product. Exactly. And it's not even good good stuff. That's, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. And that's when uh, companies like Magic Spoon come in. And then they're <laughs> just like, yeah, hell yeah, dude. You like sugary cereals, but you can't have any? Got you. You know, I really wish that my body agreed with Magic Spoon, but it doesn't. Really? Yeah. Wow. There's just a whole bunch of unnecessary fiber and shit. Mm -hmm. I can see that. But anyways. Yeah. Anyway. That was number one. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. No, it is not. Um, many reasons. Fast for a little bit of time. Come on. Yeah. You're strong enough. For sure. <laughs> uh, number two is, this is, uh, this is one that feminists are going to love, <laughs> but that's equality of outcome equals equality of opportunity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, keep in mind that this is, one of the, this is one of the foundational beliefs that the more progressive types like to follow. Yeah. And they believe that everybody should have equality of outcome. Mm -hmm. But when you do your research, when you study what that actually means, that in essence reveals everybody makes the same amount of money, mm -hmm. everybody lives in the same house, everybody does the same line of work. Like it's complete, it's just foolish. Mm -hmm. But what we, we do want people to support is equality of opportunity. So this is like everybody gets the same level of opportunity, mm -hmm. but there are different results based on work ethic, based on what you do. Skill level, experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a different way to evaluate um, a person, not the mm -hmm. condition of a person. Um, and what equality of outcome uh, points to is socialism. It's like it's communist agenda. Yeah. Because that's exactly what... Um, yeah. Soviet Union believed in yeah. all those other regimes. Yeah, it's like everybody should have the same opportunity to climb the ladder, whatever ladder they please. Mm -hmm. um, not focus on the outcome. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah. I don't know, man. The whole... Uh, <laughs> well, where do you... Like, where, where do you stand with that? I mean, here's the, the thing. The thing is, like, if you want to measure historically... I am I am no one to say that that was a thing, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, getting paid 20 cents under mm -hmm. just because you're a woman, for example. Well, it's not even true. That's the funny thing. It's only because men choose more dangerous jobs. Mm -hmm. They're more willing to put in a lot more hours to dedicate yeah. their lives to a career. Um, they happen to go into more men happen to go into STEM fields, mm -hmm. which pay a lot more money. So that whole uh, what is it? The income gap idea, it's, it's bullshit. Yeah. Complete horseshit. No, I can sense some bullshit. Um, but I am also just standing on the fact that I was not alive at the time. Mm. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying it happens today. Like, I, obviously, that's uh, insanity. Yeah. Um, but back in the day, like, if you were to go back to the 50s, uh, where pay gaps were introduced as a theoretical idea, and then everyone, and then people started catching on, I don't know if that happened. I'm sure there was more sexism back in the day. Yeah, like there was racism and everything else. There was more uh, inferiority. But also sure. you had the, like, like, women naturally tended to be um, housewives. Yeah. Usually they wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. And if they did, it would be a copyright, you know, or a personal yeah. assistant. Mm -hmm. Something where you're taking care of a house without being in a house. That's true. Okay. I'm, I'd hate, I hate to say, like, say it in, that, in those words, but that's really what it was. <laughs> And we're talking about the 50s here. And uh, even with equality of opportunity, like, 
people love to focus on this idea of fairness. Yeah. Everything should be fair. Fair and, you know, sharing is caring. Which keep in mind, nothing in life is fair. Like there, there are people who grow up in a very wealthy family, have everything handed to them, and they go on to be successful. Yeah. While there are other people who are barely like, yeah. they don't grow up with anything. Yeah. Well, instead of focusing on equality of outcome and, you know, I, I, why don't you focus on getting what you want? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a huge thing. No one actually realizes is that if you structure what you want and you do anything without anything stopping you or coming in your way to push through and just get what you want, you can get what you want. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. It's all on you. So the outcome is you. The outcome is you. Mm -hmm. So people settle. Have this, yeah. This false narrative that it's come, on somebody yeah. else. Come to a settling decision with yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to. Um, What's our next one, Mister? Yeah. Number Said. <laughs> number tres is going to be, I think, a huge lie. Is being a good father requires presence. This one flies under the radar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we hear that a lot. Now, I'm not going to disregard that, you know, um, being present is not important. But to say that being present is all that is needed to being a good father, bullshit. Yeah. Okay? That doesn't show me anything. It doesn't show me you tried. It doesn't show me what you do for the family. It doesn't show me anything. Being present, what's good about, about being present in there? But if you're drunk all the time or high all the time. Yeah. You can be present, yeah. but you're not providing. Exactly. Um, Dude, I can, I can literally choose a corner in the house and sit there for days. Okay. And just because I'm not joining the regular functionality, but I'm, I'm, I'm still present. Like if you call my name, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean I'm there. Okay. So it's the same thing. But what I truly think is more important than presence is responsibility responsibility yeah. yeah because if you are not responsible then you just happen to be present mm -hmm. okay presence is not like the the key thing here uh, yeah i know Take plenty of young guys who they've grown they've grown to mature themselves and their father's not necessarily there all the time mm -hmm. but just mere fact of like they are within their lives to some capacity um it's more so that they're learning through osmosis. They're watching their father do certain things and they pick up on that. Mm -hmm. And then they emulate it. Mm -hmm. Because that's what children ultimately do. It's just emulate their parents or whoever they're around. Yeah. Um, now I can see why um, people get told that, you know, you, you need to be present to be a good father. You know, a good father is always present. I mm -hmm. get it. Like, they, it, it probably means within the sense of, um, uh, my child has a violin show tonight and without him asking, I should already have made plans to be there. Mm -hmm. Right. In support or, um, being present as in making plans for the family. You're doing things with purpose. When you do things with purpose, it shows. Okay. It plays along yeah. with the function. Um, but yeah, do you see how presence can be just deceiving? Like you could oh, be for a, sure. you could be presently quiet and you still like, whoa, that doesn't do anything. You know, you have to be playful, talkative, something. You know, there has to be a motivation for the day. You're doing something. For, yeah. Not like, just being present. Like we mentioned, you can be around your family. Yeah. But if you're a deadbeat father, yeah. what difference does it make? So if like, for example, if someone's father died and then they didn't feel anything and they're sitting there at his grave and they're like, you know, I knew you and you were there all the time, but I don't feel a connection. Mm -hmm. What the hell does the, pre yeah. So in your memories, he was in the room. It's just never present. But he was a strong not, father figure. Do you see how like he's present, but he's not present? Yeah. That means presence <clears throat> doesn't mean anything to be a good father. Like you don't, mm -hmm. it's not about presence. It's about responsibility. It's about uh, planning ahead. It's about having, so a business is an operation. You need a family operation as well. Mm -hmm. Some people play it differently and they have a family operation which turns into royal family and mafia. <laughs> you don't have to go down that route, but um, yeah, 
I, I, I absolutely think that um, fa- to be a good father, you just have to take responsibility, take action, and um, plan forward for everybody else. Yeah, for sure. You always have plan A and plan B, but not just that. You also have plan C, D, E, F, G, and H. You're a man. You plan ahead. Exactly. Exactly. And, that's, and yeah. now we go on to number four. Number four. Which is also think? a big one that flies under the radar, mm-hmm. is that laziness is inherently bad. Yeah. Laziness is not bad, guys. We are led to believe that laziness is bad because we are lazy individuals. <laughs> it depends on the context. Yeah. So, I'm just going to out, go out and say this. Um, if you're a person that practices some sort of self-awareness, self-development, self-discipline, um, and uh, there's also a misconception with that. People think that self-development and me practicing self-development means I'm being so harsh on myself. No. Mm-hmm. It's the, you, you at least start with mindfulness. <laughs> yeah. It's very simple. Um, but yeah, this, this goes out to you, basically. Um, I think it would work in m- most of their context because they're, they're kind of more aware of mm-hmm. the day-to-day. Um, but laziness is, is inherently bad. No, 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 no. Absolutely like not. There's that, laziness is an art if you do it correctly. Yeah, that, and that's the that's the key phrase. Do it correctly. Yeah, like, you can be lazy all you want if you get shit done. Mm-hmm. If you get the most important task done, yeah, you can just veg out for the rest of the day, assuming you wake up at a certain time and just knock it all out. Yeah, but do you see how? So with laziness, we think of it as this thing where you're just a a blob of a neck beard where you just <laughs> lay in your chair beard. all day and, and you're just going from streaming platform to streaming platform from game to game. And, Which happens a lot, granted. Yeah. And you want to be rich, but you're not doing anything to get that, right? Mm-hmm. So you create apps like Twitch, and then you're just like, yeah, dude. And I'm just going <laughs> to... Yeah, dude. Yeah, why go anywhere where I could just work right here? That, I, yeah. See, I, I slightly do have a, a problem with remote work, too, just mm-hmm. because of environment. But um, get to that too, another episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, um, going back to basically being a neckbeard, um, <laughs> which is, I don't know why that's a term, but I guess because it makes it's sense. true. Yeah, it's true. I guess you might find a little crumb there. Um, <laughs> Just one. Yeah, laziness. There's uh, there's 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 benefits to it. It's it's learning how to be lazy. Um, let me paint you a picture real quick. We all know someone like this, <laughs> mm-hmm. a workaholic, so someone definitely. that likes to just put in hours and hours of like actual work like one focus um somebody who feels uncomfortable if they're not working yeah someone that is is totally not going to be able to know what to do when they have downtime Mm -hmm. vacation is going to be very hard (laughs) Um, which to me is like yeah i've I've never understood that i've never been that type of workaholic Mm. um to the point where it's like i have anxiety that i'm not working yeah that's me that's that's that that used to be me, mm-hmm. and I, I didn't know I had a problem. I thought that was that was normal, you know. Like I'm a go getter. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly like why wouldn't I be thinking about work? Yeah, you know, it's my it's my everything. It's but what you come to realize is that you seriously need to start enjoying things, mm-hmm. and the joy is actually washed out. Like if if someone invites you on a um, on a cruise and you're like, yeah, yeah, I'd be so down. I'll bring my laptop. Why? Why do you bring your laptop? Why? Why? You don't need to work. No, no. Make sure that you get some work done before you go on this and enjoy your time because enjoying your time is work of its own. Mm -hmm. Okay. You still, it doesn't mean you don't try and things happen. When you want to go have a good time, you still have to put in that effort. If anything, you're working on the parts of your life that don't involve work. Yeah. And I <laughs> which can, are very important. Yeah. I can relate this to like uh, love relationships too. Um, when you don't put in the work and things just happen, it seems to drift away. But when you summon the courage to sit there and put in the effort mm-hmm. and do all that, you start to count the flower petals. and You start to count. Like it just becomes way more detailed and... Um, Appreciate the other things in life. Yeah. You realize that the wheel you have in life to steer is not just for work. People assume it's for career path. It's not for career path. Whatever you do in your career, that has to translate into your own personality. And it Mm -hmm. becomes your own, um, like, 
being. That's who you are. Yeah. You're, you found your pace. You, you've discovered your, the ways you, you build. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's completely different. Um, laziness is a positive and negative form. Mm-hmm. Um, but you cannot disregard the, the positive form. And uh, keep in mind that having, that having time to not do anything, that also produces creative, like, insight. Mm-hmm. It's artistic. You're, you're flowing through, like, there's, I like to believe that we have two lives on Earth, okay? We have the life that we live right now through our peripheral vision, and then we have our life that we live alone. Mm-hmm. Okay? And whatever you live through alone, no one knows what that's going to feel like. Everyone has their own experience. And that's not for you to necessarily share and, and convince people of. No, no it's, convincing whatsoever. No. It comes down to you. It comes down to you. And that's live that life and live this one too. And don't be yes. afraid of laziness. Don't be afraid of laziness. Laziness is an, is an art form. You need to know how to unwind, relax, because your body needs it. Your mind needs it. What good is it if you're not resting and you're just mm-hmm. burning yourself out every three months for two to three weeks? That makes no sense. Mm. If anything, you're wasting more time. That's yeah. the way I see it. You're burning the candle on, yeah. on both ends. Exactly. Well, what's, yeah. uh, what's number That's five? Uh, number five, my dude, is... I'm going to have fun with this one. Yeah. Like, what am I always told? <laughs> what am I always told? You got to eat your greens so you, you can You got to eat your greens, man. Eat more greens. Greens is the way to go. You need your fibers. You need your, you know... No, here's the, here's the thing. <laughs> um... Living things don't like to be eaten, eaten, and that applies both to the animal world as well as the plant world. Mm-hmm. So believe it or not, plants have defense mechanisms. Most plants, I don't know if there are any ones without them, but most plants have these defense mechanisms to prevent uh, them from being eaten by other predators. Mm. Now, I'll list out a few categories. Uh, so an example is anti-nutrients. So Mm -hmm. phytic acid, oxalic acid, these actually decrease nutrient uh, availability within the body. Yeah. So for example, kale, um, cabbage, Mm. like these are all examples of of foods that would have anti-nutrients. Beans are a big example as Mm -hmm. well. Uh, You have endocrine disruptors uh, from lectins, phytoestrogens, which comes from soy. Mm -hmm. You have immune disruptors. and yeah, I mean, the, there's a whole list of these compounds that actually hurt your body more than they help. Yeah. Now, it depends on the individual. You might do well with uh, a plant-based diet. Uh, diet is a very individual thing, while other people might get wrecked, just absolutely destroyed from having Doing a plant-based yeah. diet. Perfect example is Jordan Peterson. Mm. The guy literally only eats steak with salt. That's all he can eat. Yeah. And if he eats something outside of that, he gets royally fucked up. Wow. So not worth it. He, and, and for a guy his age, he's, I'm sure he's had his fair share of experience yeah. with that. So he's come to his own decision. Mm-hmm. And that's ultimately the problem I have with nutrition advice these days. It's that we're led to believe that it's a one size fits all mm-hmm. when it's not. Yeah. Now you see my problem when I, wh- that I have with marketing when you have like a company like Huel telling you that it, you have a, or not, I don't know if it's Huel specifically. Um, but when they tell you it's a personalized meal plan for your body, you're well, by a- answering these questions, which you cannot no. get from answering. You questions. have two different types. You're sending me one of them. That's it. You know how you do that? You get fecal results. Mm-hmm. Like you take a, a sample of your shit. Yeah. Take a sample of your blood, sample of your saliva, get like, um, what's it called? You get a, what are the tests called to see if you're, um, if you react to certain foods or not. Oh, the allergy? Allergy, allergy test. Yeah. yeah. That's how you assess whether or not mm. a food does well for you or not. Yeah. By answering some fucking questions on a questionnaire. Yeah. How do you feel today? Do you feel stoic? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> well, then you would do well with broccoli. <laughs> what? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. I don't know, dude. When I think of stoicism, I don't, I, I, trust me, I do not think of broccoli. That's for <laughs> We think of steak. Yeah, you think of steak, like a nice little ham. Fatty or, cuts of meat. Yeah, something. <sighs> Antioxidants. <laughs> but yeah, greens are not the most important thing. I think they're overrated. Yeah. And, Depends uh, on you, though. 
they're not really uh, that delicious. You know, I have to put a lot of things on it for it to be delicious. So let's see. I will gladly stay away I from it. I would rather die than eat candy. And if anything, I do better with meat anyway, so. Yeah. Um, moving on to number six, we got... Number six. The number one that we hear all the time, actually. I don't know why it's number six. This should have been number one, but anyway. Money does not make you happy. Bullshit. Bullshit. And I will tell you why. Because money is comfort. Money is security. Money is freedom. Money is freedom. Money allows you to do the things that would drive your happiness mm -hmm. without a thought. Huh. Wouldn't it be nice to just swipe, swipe, swipe all day? And not worry about what's in your bank account. Yeah, because you know you have more of it coming tomorrow yeah. and the day after. No, that's facts. Yeah. That's um, it's called being rich. Being and I'm sure you're financially secure. I'm sure you're aware of the study mm -hmm. with the seventy-five thousand dollar limit. Like they, I do they not did, know about they the did study. a study back in the day where yeah. I think it was a few years ago, where they basically analyzed like people's happiness. They compared people's happiness to the level of wealth that they have, and mm -hmm. they saw that a cutoff of seventy-five thousand dollars, yeah, was enough. Anything above that, you don't get much happier. They went back, redid the study, or analyzed it some somehow. Mm -hmm. And they found out that was bullshit. The more money you make, the happier you get. Yeah. Which just makes sense. It's just ultimate freedom. So think of Earth as um, a big giant theme park. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we each get the same card. And it's loaded with different amounts of money. Okay. You can clearly see who's having fun in life. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can see it. Yeah. And let me tell you this. There's no greater feeling than walking around knowing that you can ride anything mm -hmm. and you have unlimited amount. Not being that one dude who worries about, like, has to yeah. check his phone. Hmm. I don't have enough. Let me see what car to take uh, for our trip next week so we don't have to spend a ton on gas. Like, it just, that thought just suddenly becomes non-existent. Mm -hmm. Why are you worried about gas? Well, I'm worried about getting there. Yeah. You know what? The car's not even going to do it. We're going to take a flight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like... It starts to turn into this, this fantasy world where you could literally do anything. Who do you think are the types of people that believe money doesn't make them happy? Um, I, th I would have to say people that did not grow up poverty. Um, like didn't grow up wealthy? No, they didn't grow up wealthy. Yeah. And they had very little growing up. There's a lot to it, but I would say that first and foremost. Why? Because then we have different status levels of, um, I wouldn't say misery, but hardship. Yeah. Okay. People so feel like, bitter about yeah. it. Yeah. So my hardship was, oh my God, how am I going to walk 30 miles to this job interview and then work for three months so I can afford a dinky car so then I can proceed to go to work like a normal human being, mm -hmm. right? That's someone's like life somewhere. Yeah. Okay. And then you have another person where he woke up and he's like, oh my God, how am I going to get through these seven meetings today for these $3.5 <laughs> million signages? In my Lamborghini. In my Lamborghini Yaris. with my freaking, uh, with this really bad haircut, mm. you know? And I have a throbbing headache. How am I going to get through this? It's all relative. Okay. If we take both and we just split them as feelings without any context, okay? They could possibly be feeling the same thing. Mm -hmm. but one's in his own world and the other one's in a, his own other world. The wealthier guy's dealing with higher level problems. Like he's not focused on surviving. Exactly. He's focused it's no on- no longer like, yeah. um, like human nature. It's just more like, this is the life he was given. Like he, he, he can't, it's not, it's his own lens. He can't change the lens and be like, well, he, he technically he could, I mean, mm -hmm. anyone could. You can just fly out somewhere and just become a tribe, I guess. <laughs> Build your own tribe. Yeah. But you can see how clearly, without denying it, there's always going to be a difference. And trust me, like, we both know how it feels to be broke. Yeah. It's not a I fucking mean, fun feeling. Of course. I mean, I come from a broke place. Yeah. It's not fun. And it's not, like... And it teaches not, you a lot, to be honest. Yeah. We're not focused on the money because it's... Yeah. 
like just for the sake of having money. Yeah. It's what it does for us. It like provides yeah. freedom, which is yeah. personally my most important. It's value. because we've had so many mental periods, right? Where you, you think a hole in earth, just thinking about one very simple thing that money could just fix, right? Mm -hmm. When there's people out there swimming in money and then they have other problems and they can't fix them. Yeah. They don't have the mental capacity to fix it. And money isn't going yeah. to solve all problems. But here's the thing. We're all rich in different areas. Okay. I wasn't rich with um, money. Mm -hmm. Like money and hard earned money and everything. But I was rich with mentality, with perspective. Creativity. Creativity. Yeah. Uh, envisioning my lens, making uh, small things seem big, uh, having a huge impact with very priceless things. Work ethic as well. Work ethic. Everything. Everything changes, you know? And then um, I believe it just makes you a little bit more humbled down as well. Mm -hmm. And you, you know what kind of person you are earlier than most. And what you like and what you need and what you don't. And just as a, as a final comment, I think here's the worst thing about believing that money doesn't make you happy is that mm -hmm. inevitably you're pushing it away from your life. Mm-hmm. Because you inherently think of it in a negative light. Mm -hmm. I can see that. So why would you attract a lot of money? Why would you put in the work if you think that it doesn't make you happy? Yeah. Obviously, there I are mean, exceptions. There are people yeah. who don't have a lot of money who are very happy. There are always going to be questions like that. Like, there's going to be the questions like, oh, man, like, why does, why does God kill off the, the, the good people first and yeah. leaves the evil ones? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> we just, don't have an answer we, we for that. We don't have an answer. Like, it's, it's just, just, it is what it is. It is what it is. Stop complaining. And rather manifest what you want to manifest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> believe. You know, and when I say believe, people think believe. It, me it means believe hardcore for three months. No. <laughs> believe for till the day you die. Yeah. And if it makes you feel terrible, there's still people that are in their 60s and 50s that are starting today. That's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all relative, yeah. man. It's all relative. Stop thinking of your age as you're getting older. You're not getting older. You're just getting wiser. Yeah. Moving on to number seven. Pisses me off. <laughs> this is one that uh, is very interesting to me, especially as an athlete. But you need to train daily and kill yourself doing 100%. it. A hundred percent. Now, with my athletic background, I like to focus on longevity. Yes. Like I want to play soccer and be able to do all those things for as long as possible until my body just calls it quits. Mm. Um, it's a great goal. But with this, like with the train daily, I, if you do it wisely, you can do it. But killing yourself, absolutely destroying your body to the point where you can't even get up the next day. Yeah. I think is reckless. It's stupid. Yeah. Very. Because, uh, well, you know your limits. Um, but for the people that, that don't or actually don't have experience with mind body connection right they don't especially know when limits, it comes yeah. to exercise if you don't have that you can actually very heavily relate when it comes to brain work so if you've read something or if you had to you know accumulate a 25 page essay within 24 hours you know how much your brain hurts and actually most likely you can't really function the next day it's the same thing it's a different mm -hmm. type of, your your brain is a muscle and you've You've killed it last night. You know, you killed it. The paper's amazing. But you also just, you need to recover a little bit from that. You can do things in a much yeah. smarter way. And that's why sleep is important when it comes to the body. Because yeah. it, it really, sleep and nutrition blended well will help you get to the gym tomorrow too. Mm -hmm. Even if you just killed yourself yesterday. And obviously with the practice of it, it gets easier and easier. Um, you start to know that your body's fatigued, but it's just gotten so good at recovery that it just... Comes and unless you're a very like high level athlete, like a power lifter or whatever, mm -hmm. the most you should spend in the gym is 45 minutes to yeah. an hour. Yeah. Because There's what a, the hell else are you yeah, doing? Yeah, because if you calculate your rest times, especially if you're trying to grow uh, muscle mass, if you calculate your rest times, your rest times are already short. What the hell's taking you so long at the gym? Like you don't need to be three hours in yeah. the gym, just bicep curls yeah. for the entire time. The only time that it should ever exceed 45 minutes is if is if it's like under two hours, but it was just a busy day at the gym. But you're like being you're smart about it. You're not just hammering, hammering it out 24 seven, like the entire time. Yeah. You're taking breaks and you're calculating your breaks. Mm -hmm. Everything's calculated. 
if you're, dude, that, that's that's the thing. That's what's funny, is that you know how to calculate your gym stuff. You know, for most people, you can calculate that. And I see people walking around with like a notebook, but then you don't know how to calculate the rest of your day, mm -hmm. because a uh, the day is not an estimation. It's a calculation from the day, from the moment you wake up. You already knew from the moment you went to sleep what you were going to do when you woke up. It's, cal it's a calculated process. Which reminds me of actually another lie that we didn't mention on this list. Is that <laughs> how you do one thing is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. That's complete bullshit. That's true. You're telling me if I'm lazy when it comes to school, I'm going to be lazy when it comes to something that I, I'm actually passionate about? Yeah, in sports? No, no. That's not, that's not true. Yeah. But anyways, final thoughts on that? Final thoughts is, yes, you should absolutely train daily, whether it's your brain, body, or something. Okay, you have to implement the practice throughout the day and kill yourself doing it, especially the body. Um, don't kill yourself doing it. Don't, I mean, don't kill yourself doing it. Um, like, relax. <laughs> Calm down, bro. Yeah. yeah, relax. For all the gym bros out there. Calm down. Yeah, I can see why uh, a lot of people like um, a nice cup of tea after. Mm -hmm. <laughs> unwinding activities. Fair enough. All right. Well, number seven is over, and we are now at number eight with never judge a book by its cover. That is a huge lie, man. Mm. Why do you think that's a lie? Because we are the ultimate judging machines as, a, as human beings. Bingo. Nail on the head. Yeah. Nail on the head. For sure, because, and I hope you don't judge me by that. But. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you do judge me. But it's, it's yeah. very simple. As human beings, we evolved to judge. Yeah, we evolved to judge. And if anything, you know, being in business has taught me one thing. You need to judge, man. <laughs> you need to know who you're selling to. Like, th dude, think back to if you're a hunter-gatherer back mm -hmm. in the day, all right? Yes. 10,000 BC, I don't know, whatever fucking time frame you want. And there's, um, there's some rustling in the bushes. Mm-hmm. Uh oh! You have no idea what that thing is. It could be a tiger. It could be a person from be, your tribe. It could be your wife. We don't know. The reason why you judge is to maintain your survival. Because if it is a tiger, you are fucked. Yeah. And you're not willing to take that bet, to mm -hmm. take that risk. Mm -hmm. Now just apply that to everything else in life. I think there is a difference between judging and then being judgmental. Yeah. Being like, judgmental. Judging is... from the point of just assessing a situation Whereas being judgmental is more about being arrogant and like looking down upon people, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to say that it's inevitable. Everyone's going to judge, um, whether it's conscious or subconscious. Yeah. Um, but the way I see judging is that you can use it as a motivator. Um, within certain areas of your life how so so um i am not rich but i would like to know what it would be like um to be rich so what am mm -hmm. i gonna do i'm gonna go to the golf range and i'm gonna scout what am i doing by scouting i'm judging yeah i'm judging because i'm i'm looking for something specific right now right so I go out and I find a man with a really nice set of clubs. So I already put a price tag on that. So I'm already really judging. expensive set of clubs. It doesn't mean I'm judging in a bad way. I'm just judging that he, this guy must own a nice car, a nice house. He has a really good business and I want to be around him. Sure. Those are things you would assume, yeah. Yeah. So what am I doing there? I'm judging. I'm not, I'm not going to deny it. But am I being judgmental? Mm -hmm. No. So, and I think a better word in, yeah. in place of judge is assess. Mm -hmm. Analyze. Analyze, yeah. Observe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, take this saying, never judge a book by its cover, and just put always judge a book by its cover because you don't know what, what you're missing out on. You're, you're, you're formulating a story every time you come in contact with someone. Mm -hmm. You know? It's true. And... Here's the thing. Here's what's funny about never ju judge a book by its cover. Let's just say you follow that, okay? And you you're you're a you're a yippity yes man and <laughs> <laughs> you're just always positive, you know, mm -hmm. and be benefiting of the doubt for everybody. Yeah. Um 
and you see a homeless man, and he smells, and he comes up to you, and you're just like, no, 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 no. I know that's the first impression, but no, no, no. Let's just put that red flag aside. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure he comes from a nice home. And then he starts, like, I don't know, putting a hammer to his head and just going insane. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, like, like, how does that benefit that, you at that, all? That doesn't benefit me in, in any sort of way. And if anything, it has just added a negative connotation to never judge a book by its cover. Mm. And it makes me believe it less. So, yeah, it's just, it's a big, big, big lie for me. Always judge a book by its cover. Always judge a book by its cover. Courtesy of this man. Yes. Now, number nine. Number nine. And we are ending... Uh, we are nearing the end of the list. But mm. anyways, this is motivation is something to rely on slash is needed daily. Now I call BS on that because think back to how many days you didn't feel motivated, mm -hmm. but they actually happen to be the most productive days yeah. you've ever had. Yeah. And well, that's, that's where I make the differentiation between mm -hmm. motivation and discipline. Mm -hmm. I've spoken about this before. Motivation is... It's not something you, you can rely on. It's more of a fleeting feeling. Whereas discipline is a commitment to just get the thing done, regardless of how you feel. So I think it's very important for people to make that differentiation because it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. I mean, motivation is something that you're not always going to have. No. Okay. And if you're a person that is proactive and has a lot of things going on, um, you can't rely on that. That's what, you've, that's what you come to learn is that when you're starting things, you get motivated easily. So you start. And along the process, it starts to become more of the same pattern of routine where you're doing the same constant things and it's for growth and et cetera. But motivation fades. You start, it fades quickly. Yeah, and sometimes you start to realize that your motivational tools are things that are all around you, actually. Like, sometimes mm -hmm. it could be lunch today. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow, it could be um, the soccer game I'm going to watch. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but motivation, I would say, don't rely on it because it's not always around. And if anything, you have to be inspired, not motivated. You have to be intrinsically motivated, which means you are connected to what your ideal lifestyle in the mm -hmm. future is. Uh, you're connected to your values. And then from that point, you implement discipline, which there are going to be plenty of times where you feel like just complete shit. Yeah. But you have to get some things done. Yeah. To move forward. Yeah. Now, as everybody knows by now, I believe in balance. <laughs> the good old balance. And a, a good secondary word for balance is moderation. So I believe that you can have things, even bad things, you know, if you have them in moderation for something that works for you responsibly. Why not? Why not? It's not going to harm you. If anything, you just know what it feels like or you know what it's like to be on that side mm -hmm. or to have tried that or to have done this. Um, yeah, moderately. I mean, we enjoy cookies, too. We enjoy chocolate. We like, I love Sour Patch. But you can't Come be pounding on. it 24-7, yeah. man. You can't. You can't. You can't. That's the problem. And then here's the funny part. When you practice everything in moderation and you start becoming way more balanced, you actually have way more motivation on the daily. You have mm. way more inspiration. You have more alertness. Yeah. You are just more of a joy to be around and especially be around yourself. Mm. It's, it's glory. And yeah, motivational, motivation will always drift off and it'll come back and drift off again. So don't rely on it for your daily needs, but rather find hobbies and things you actually enjoy so that you can feel inspired and motivated by them. And the best way to like, to understand how unreliable motivation is, is just, just go through your TikTok, mm -hmm. go through one of those motivation accounts that has the videos or whatever quotes. Mm -hmm. You'll be scrolling through that. You might get a hit of motivation, you know. Mm -hmm. You might do something, but then you'll fall off inevitably. Yeah. Because you don't have discipline. Yeah, you don't have the practice of discipline either. You mm -hmm. can have... Ah, that's such a big, big topic. But discipline, dude, you can, you can read all about it. But if you're not practicing what it's telling you, you're not going anywhere. 
You're not. You're just in this. What what, what do they call it? I know they have a word for it. What? But it's like this cycle of non self development obsession. Oh, um. Like you're just obsessed with the idea of self development, but you're not actually. It's like self-developed. personal development, masturbation, or something. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. It's, and it's just you're not actually never, getting something done. You're not getting anything done. You know when you get things done? When you make your bed in the morning. That actually triggers more motivation than you would think. Mm-hmm. But not many of us do it. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't start doing it until two years ago. I don't do it. I don't care for that. But No, but do you see how it just... I had a problem. It sets the day for, yeah. the, for the... It sets the mood for yeah. the day. It's like if someone comes to you and says, I have a problem, and they don't see the big picture because this is so new to them, you have to start small. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Wake up and have... Uh, don't, don't put anything in your system. Like, make that a rule. Don't put anything in your system until you have a nice glass of water with lemon. That's the same thing as doing your bed, by the way. Simple things. You just oh, have this simplicity. root routine that you do. And it, yeah, it's just, it's part of being uh, proactive and hyperactive. And, and then number 10 actually enjoy. ties into this quite nicely. Yeah. And that's, uh, you need to be happy all the time. You, you don't do. need to be happy all the time. You do. No. You don't. No. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, I was like, are you actually are you like, actually, disagreeing? No, no. <laughs> we wrote this list, man. Come on. Yeah. I mean, listen, if you understand how emotion works, it's a roller coaster. Some mm-hmm. days you'll feel happy. Some days you'll feel terrible. But I think most importantly, people need to appreciate that if you're not going through a very terrible experience, mm-hmm. you're happy. It's binary. It's, it's either yes or no. 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 And if anything, I have a practice for everybody to do. But it's when you wake up in the morning, you ask yourself, how am I feeling right now? How am I feeling today? And be honest, okay? <laughs> like the past couple of days, both of us have felt like shit. Yeah, like uh, like as you can hear it, you could probably hear it in our voice, yeah. but we're, we're dying. <laughs> I mean, yesterday I had f- yeah. basically a full-on fever. Yeah, we've had a, I've had a cold the past couple of days and Zaid has uh, followed. <laughs> But um, is what it is. We're better yeah, now. It's, it's inevitable, dude. We're always gonna get sick, but we don't get sick for ten days. We only get sick for twenty four hours, boy. Yeah, boy. That's what happens? Um, but no, you don't need to be happy all the time. And the practice that I was gonna mention is you. Well, I actually already said it. You basically wake yourself up and you ask yourself, "How am I feeling?" And you be honest. Okay. You acknowledge it. Yeah. You acknowledge it, and even if it's gonna hurt you or if it's gonna cause you to be too excited whatever um but write it down today hmm, feeling a little sad why i don't know it's just a feeling i just woke up right yeah there's other days where you wake up and you're like oh my god all i can think of is the beach like i just want to go to the beach a very sunny happy day you know yeah and then there's other days where you just wake up and you just want to punch some guy you mm-hmm. just want to punch him Angry. You don't know why, but you know what? I'm acknowledging that. I'm not going to dive into why I'm angry as at the moment, but I'm just going to say that I'm angry. What are you going to do about it? The same thing you're going to do every single day anyway. Get shit done. <laughs> yeah. Practice that. And it's, it's kind of like you're feeding yourself little things to just do that. And then you realize that's only the first hour of your day. And um, someone complimented you at Starbucks and now you're happy. You know? Mm-hmm. Great. You're, it's not, but do you see how that goes? Yeah. And then after you go, let's just say we go to the stew and the AC is just broken and we're all, we're going to have a sweaty work day. <laughs> I'd be pissed, but We've I was just happy. had a few weeks of that. But I was just happy. Yeah, because right? you're, you're focused on something. Now, do you, see, do you see the process? Mm-hmm. Okay, happy all the time. You have to, see, you, the only way you'll know if you were truly happy is if, when you seal the day. When you go home and you're in bed and you go, let me think about and recap what I did today. This, that, that, that. Cool. Got everything I needed done. Sweet. I'm going to note that. Today was a great day. Mm. But as you're falling asleep, you're not happy. You're tired. You're exhausted. You're, you're thinking look- about shit yeah. that doesn't need to be thought yeah. about. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes you're not even looking forward to tomorrow, but you know that the beast inside of you is going to say, shut up. You're going to do it anyway. <laughs> the David Goggins inside of you. Yeah. And that's it. That's initially what you want to get to. Yeah. That doesn't happen overnight. But. And uh, I'll also state this. Feelings are not that important. Now, it depends on the context. Like if you're in a, in a relationship and mm-hmm. 
your girlfriend is talking about her feelings, listen. That's important mm -hmm. to the, the health of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Intuition is, is an example where feelings are important. Yeah. Um, but other than that, when it comes to like getting your stuff done and trying to make 1% progress every day, really doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Another thing I would like to say, when it comes to relationships that I see, I see this a lot and I get told this as advice. <laughs> Jesus, fuck. Advice. Yeah. It's funny because they think they're giving advice, but it's really just horrendous. <laughs> um, it's uh, always putting a woman in her place. You got to always like that's that's your motivational tool. To uh, it's building, a very immature way to yeah, state it. To yeah, to building a healthy relationship between a man and a woman. That's, okay, that's so like if you Saudi acknowledge Arabia yourself, version yeah, of... if you acknowledge yourself as a man, okay, your motivator for the whole relationship is to always constantly seek putting her in her place. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's so retarded. Yeah. yeah. Stupid. And it, that's what's funny is that it gets told to you as advice. Of course. You know, because it's, you're reading the wrong alpha book. That's what it is. There's no true alpha book. <laughs> okay. There's a alpha by being a man and just studying other men and leaders throughout history. No, bro. You need to put that bitch in her place. No, dude. No. <laughs> I gotta be a Chad, dude. You gotta be a Chad Thundercock. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, yeah, we've covered ten. Yeah, we've covered quite a ten bit. today. Um, there's two more that I was gonna say, but I'll just go through them really quickly. Yeah, we'll do it quickly. Um, working twenty four seven and saving your money makes you rich. How no, it does not. State one sentence describing your opinion on that, and we'll call it a day. Okay, that is disgusting. First of all, that so, is here that we is go. my opinion. My opinion is that working twenty four seven is disgusting, and saving your money makes you rich. No, it does not. Actually, working less but working with more purpose and mm. more focus improves your work over time, therefore making it seem like you work 24 seven when really you're just focusing and dialing in on the details, which is where the hours are going. Second, saving your money does not make you rich. Saving your money allows for more investments that will work for you. And then therefore you will one day be sleeping and making money at the same time. Yep. And that is my two cents. Um, yeah, anything you have to say about that? <laughs> um, I think it just comes down to, are you doing the right things? If you're not, you're not going to make that much progress, even if you work 24 mm seven. -hmm. And if you do, you'll make a lot of progress mm -hmm. by working a third of the time. Mm -hmm. And obviously I agree with you. Saving your money doesn't make you rich. Like mm -hmm. you can have, you can have a whole bunch of money sitting in a savings account, but what is it doing for you? Is yeah. your money working for you at the end of the day? No, it is not. No, good in, sir. In fact, it's going against you because yeah. inflation is rising. Yep. And yeah, you're a sitting duck at that point. Exactly. You're wasting hours. Um, All right, next dial one. in. Next one. And this is our last one. The last and final one. Drum roll, please. We got <gasps> reading makes you smart. Ah. Ah. One the, sentence. What do you think? Yeah. What I think. I think uh, when you inherently, well, when you, when you just deeply think about it, it, reading does make you smart. That's because you're a smart person. But reading generally anything does not make you smart. Um, mm -hmm. It may expand your vocabulary and it, it, even in areas that you don't want, you know, like the street lingo, you know, no cap and capping. But like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't deal with any of that crap. So, um, yeah, I would say reading does not just inevitably make you smart. Mm -hmm. just, you have to know what you're reading and you have to be yeah. focused as well. Yeah. That's my two cents on that. Um, I think reading makes you smart up to a certain point, but after anything after that line is just armchair philosophy. Mm -hmm. Armchair like philosophy. Like you could be reading a book about surfing, but are you actually surfing? No, because you're not ap applying the practices. Yeah, you're not yeah. putting yourself on the line. You're in that self-development loop, as they call it. But yes, guys. What did you think of that episode? Let us know in the comments on our YouTube video. Uh, we would like to do more of these. Also, what do you think about the new layout for? Yeah, for the, the Two AM podcast for, for the stew. Let us know everything. Um, you can find us at the Two AM podcast on Instagram and all social media platforms. Yeah. You can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, yeah. and all major streaming platforms. We're also on YouTube at the Two AM podcast. Go check us out. Uh, we post some clips and full length episodes on there. Make sure you subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe, like, leave us a comment. And if you feel free to support at the 2 ampodcast.com, we love y'all. See you next time. Peace.